Welcome to Maker Camp. Today's guest is a special effects makeup artist. She's going to be joining us from her studio, and you'll get to meet Margaret Kerrigan. We're so excited for that. We're also really excited to have on Mjolnir Academy, one of our affiliate sites. We'll check in with them later, and we'll also check in about the daily project, Zombify Yourself For Real. So let's get ready to make something great. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Camp Director Paloma. And I'm Camp Director Sam. As always, we look forward to hearing from you, so please post your questions during the show. Now, first off, let's check in with our guest makers at Mjolnir Academy and see what you guys have been working on. Uh, <laughs> Hi! Hey, guys. How's it going? Terrific. How's going? it going with you? Awesome. All right. My name is Skyler, and my favorite project was the Arduino Theremin. Oh, cool. Oh, awesome. Well done. I love to see campers doing the daily projects. Yes. My name is Lucas, and my favorite project was building this glaive. Nice. Cool. Looks cool. Um, hello, my name is Jasmine, and my favorite project of Maker Camp was um, the Stomp Rocket Ship. Oh, the Stomp Rockets are so fun. Yeah, and I see you've already got a little bit started with the uh, zombify yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we had kind of a, kind of just jumped into the ballpark and started slathering makeup on each other. <laughs> That's the best way to get started, for sure. Because zombies, zombies aren't very clean, so we figured we'll put it on and no run around. It looks awesome, and you you all have been doing such a great job interacting on the Google Plus community page. So thank you so much for that. I'm always seeing your posts. And I absolutely love yeah, them. So keep them up. We're so happy to have you. And stay with us because I know that we've got so much fun today, and we're going to be probably coming back to you for a couple questions later for our guest, who right. is amazing today. So stay with us, and we'll see you throughout the show. All right. And, and now I am so excited to bring on our first guest. Our first guest is so amazing. She does awesome special effects makeup tutorials, and she's just just does amazing, amazing work. So I'm just not gonna. I'm just stop talking about her because I'm gonna geek out for too long. So please, let's welcome Margaret Kerrigan. Ooh, Hi guys. Hi. Hello. Welcome to Maker Camp. Music, fantastic. Thank you. Glad you could join us. Uh, why don't you start off by telling us just uh, what is special effects makeup? Oh, okay. Well, special mix, uh, special effects makeup is really cool. It's a way to start transforming someone so they can perform as a character um, either in theater or film. So you might start with grease paints and you might use prosthetics and stuff to create different characters. So whether it's vampires, whether it's zombies or aliens and stuff like that, it's all live in-camera art that you put on somebody uh, so they can go be a character. Whether it's Lord Voldemort in Harry Potter um, or, you know, if you have just your basic zombies and stuff, you know, like, um, I'm going to say Warm Bodies, Shaun of the Dead, stuff like that. <laughs> uh, as a classic a, comedy zombie movies. Yeah, no. <laughs> Shaun of the Dead was one of my favorites when I saw that. I kind of thought um, it, would, it, it was uh, the perfect mix of everything that I love. I watch lots of cartoons and comedies all the time, actually. And then the work that I do is stuff that, you know, people call creepy. But it was inspired by Thriller. You know, when I was five years old... That was the stuff that like shocked me, and then I wanted to know how it was done. You know, so I saw how Rick Baker was doing Michael Jackson's Life Cast, and you had Stan Winston, all these big creature guys, uh, making this creepy, cool, long music video and stuff. You know, and I was like, I wanted to be a part of that and have lunch with zombies. <laughs> That's awesome. And campers, just so you know, we had the, the Stan Winston school on during the uh, Maker Camp Halloween. So go back and check that out after this one too, because that was awesome. And, and so, I, Margaret, can you give us a little bit of a demo of what it is that you're working on? Oh, yeah. Yeah, if you check it out right here, uh, we have my friend Corinne. Um, and she, we've, turned, we've used the same techniques that you guys are using. It's a little bit more like movie style and stuff. Um, but we've put some latex and some tissue on. So go ahead and come on closer to the camera. And, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love the smile with the with the decaying face. Yeah, you guys can see that. Uh, if you get latex, you can get it at the Halloween store. You know, um, you can put some latex on, and then when it dries, you can tear little zombie holes in the skin and stuff. You know, so it's pretty fun. 
Um, we'll let that go for a second. And then you can do a little bit of, yeah, a little bit of zombie mouth blood. You can see that. So this way, are you ready for, yeah, a little bit of chocolate, stuff like that. And then by the time that's done, we have some zombie skin. And you can tear, like, a little hole in the skin. So you want to put a couple more layers, you know? Yeah, that's my favorite effect, actually, because you can, like, you can scrape along it and get a bunch of little tiny holes, yeah. or you can pick and get a big one. And I do this at Maker Faire, and people always freak out. They're like, this is so weird and creepy. But then they see it, and they're like, oh, actually, that's super easy and fun. Yeah, it's really super fun. You just use latex. You can use some cotton. I'll keep doing some of this quietly in the background so you can see something a little more gross develop over time. Um, awesome. <laughs> it should only take a couple seconds. Um, but yeah, it's quick and easy and everybody can do it. I always feel like anybody who wants to do makeup effects can do it. Um, just, you know, go to YouTube and stuff, look things up, uh, and you can find out how to do almost any makeup. There's always somebody on there. I'm definitely yeah. doing some prosthetics and doing like some cool like demon characters with horns that you can go on later for like really cool Halloween costumes. And I'm going to take this opportunity to plug the YouTube videos that I did with Make uh, in the Make Believe section. They're, they were really fun, and they teach you the very basic stuff to get you started. So if you're a little nervous about getting, getting started with this, they're really fun. I had a great time with them, so go check those out. Uh, and Margaret, actually, why don't we go to the reel of your, of your work while we're waiting for the latex to dry? Yes. All right, so let's play that video. Oh, yeah. It looks amazing. Those are some molds around the shop. The shop's in the background here. And a lot of this footage is from the fish man, which is actually from my fiance, uh, Tony. He always wanted, that's Tony right there. <laughs> uh, that's from my friend George. That's an alien for a project called Thaw. That's his baby. It's not an alien, his baby. <laughs> um, and that's my friend Albert. We're making a life cast of him, which is a copy that we can put clay on, and then we can sculpt things to make prosthetics. And there he is as Frankenstein. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that was cool. Yeah. The flower ones were fine art. This is me, my first audition tape um, for Face Off, which is a cool makeup artist show on Sci-Fi Channel. You can catch uh, season seven right now, but I ended up going out for season six. So. Yeah, I saw that. That was a really, oh, really awesome. fun awesome. 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 <laughs> There, there's Ganondorf and Zelda. Nice. Awesome. It looks amazing. That's a rap video for a comedy group called Smosh. So <laughs> oh, I, yeah, I know Smosh. They're great. <laughs> so I think they have like 50 million hits. I had no idea, um, you know, how popular that the video was going to be. But it was really cool to participate in it and make a character like that. Um, and Zelda, she actually designed, uh, that's Jackie. She designs her own costumes. And she does amazing costumes. Um, you can get her to make Link and Zelda stuff for you all the time, but she does wonderful stuff. She's doing a fat man suit right now. So she does, like, character costumes all the time, which is another way that you guys can have fun. It's not just the makeup. You can do the whole thing and, and just have a lot of fun and make things really out of this world and stuff, you know, unbelievable. It's not, it's not just... <laughs> These guys are so cute. That's great. They, they look so fantastic. And they're using the, today's daily project, Zombify Yourself. Now, can you tell us a little bit about like what it was that inspired you to get started with, with uh, costume makeup and makeup artistry? I've actually um, I've been an artist my whole life. So I've known ever since I was little that I wanted to make characters. And when I started collecting comic books, I would see a million characters. And they're always like redesigning their outfits and stuff all the time. And I was I learned to draw from there because everything looks like drawings, like real drawings that you can do, um, as opposed to animations and stuff. You could see the work right in front of you. And I ended up going to art school at the Academy of Art, and I tried a few different classes. And sculpture was starting to you know be very interesting to me. But when I took the makeup class, I would make a kabuki makeup, I would make a demon character, I would glue beards on people and mustaches. Um, and just start doing like airbrush makeup and body painting and I, I couldn't get enough like I couldn't stop doing all these transformations in these characters um, and so I asked myself you know if I wanted to do that and I thought sure you know I'll do it I did an audition for the SF Opera uh, one summer and they didn't hire anybody but I thought it was amazing just to audition to do live art you know for characters 
And so I spent the next semester, you know, experimenting, and I met a whole bunch of wonderful filmmakers, you know, that I was doing werewolves for them, and people were lost in the desert and sunburned. And to this day, like, uh, one of those people, Adrian, was my first director. Uh, he's my officiant at my wedding this weekend, and my maid of honor and stuff was one of my other first directors. So when you do makeup, it's not just art, you know. It's an amazing group of people. There's all these people behind the camera that work really hard together to put really cool stuff in front of the camera for you guys. Yeah, that's so great, and congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> I got my fish man. <laughs> yeah, you got your fish man. So can you tell us a little bit about the fish man? I know you got some pictures of the progress there, and you could talk with us about creating a character from start to finish. Yeah, well, um, if you guys have any photos of the sculpture or anything like that, um, or illustrations, the first thing I do is, uh, oh, there's fishman illustrations. The first thing we do is we start um, thinking about how the fishman's going to look and stuff, what kind of character he has, how his uh, flesh looks different and stuff. You know, that he has these very prominent cheekbones and stuff, the large, ma the large lips, um, and like almost like a little fish mustache with the little tendrils hanging down and some fins on the side. So we want to ask ourselves, you know, we want to make a fishman that's different. We've seen a few of them before. If you go online and type in fishman makeup, there's some really cool things from some people out there. Uh, but we want it to be different. You know, you always want to be original. And so we came up with this, and I did it all in a couple days, not by myself. I did um, a life cast of Tony, and after we do the life cast, uh, you know, we put on clay and block it in. The sculpture serves as um, as a sketch and stuff, you know, where I can see where a blueprint, where things are going to go, where I'm going to map stuff out, you know. And then we break up the sculpture into pieces, and we start to mold it. Uh, and then we have prosthetics. You know, it's a nice appliance. Uh, like, if you go into the Halloween store, you can see appliances in boxes to turn yourself into Frankenstein and stuff like that. So we make a little piece that you can glue on. Um, and it's like a puzzle. You know, you put the fin on the arm. You put, you know, stuff on the face. <laughs> Sorry. Um, my zombie's going nuts here. <laughs> Um, and then, you you know, you put stuff all over, and then you blend it with glue, and then you start painting. Like, I love paint. It's the really fun part, uh, because that's when it starts to come into focus for me. Yeah, that's great, and it looks really fantastic. It, it's great to see how it goes from just a sketch all the way through, and, uh, and there's some, some finished <laughs> projects there. That looks awesome. And that's Tony there. That's our friend Julian. Um, and then we were at KrakenCon. KrakenCon... Uh, was the second part of the inspiration. Tony asked to be a fish man, but at Kraken Con, they said, can you come out and, you know, just be yourself and chat with everybody and, and do something cool and stuff. And I was like, oh, I'm going to make you a makeup. And so I waited until I was off work, and I made some time, you know, in the studio just to make something for them. And usually this is a very, it's an expensive process. You're making a lot of different things, and you're going back and forth with molding and casting. Um, so it's a very hands-on experience, and it gets very technical. Um, but it's totally worth it. I've spent the last couple years um, trying to learn how to do all these important parts, you know, so I can go on set and do the fun stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's very true, campers. When you when you take on something new, there are a lot of those, you know, boring, logistical, hard. You get technical steps, but then you you put those all together and you get through it. You get, I mean, actually, no, technical nothing is about never boring. yeah, technical is never boring, and also <laughs> nothing about makeup artistry is ever boring. But you do have to like try and try and try and like maybe maybe fail, you know, maybe you know, just you have to work through all those things before you can have this perfect, amazing outcome. I mean, my first makeup look was sadly bad. Bad. Oh gosh, it was terrible. But I had so much fun, and I learned so much from it. Yeah, it's very, it's very much left brain and right brain and stuff. You know, you want to take that art, you want to take the technical and stuff. You want to plan stuff out. You want to put it together. And when you're done, like I often, I'm, I'm really excited, bouncing, clapping my hands, um, taking photos and stuff. Uh, I get to that point where my work is done, and then they take it in front of the camera, um, and I'm just sitting there appreciating like all that hard work paying off, you know, um, I enjoy that a lot. <laughs> I love her in the background, just like, oh, I'm a zombie, this is really fun. <laughs> I actually want to hear, what is it like being being all made up like that? How do you feel? I feel awesome. <laughs> not going to lie, I love this. A couple of times Margaret used me for test things, and I, I just, I love being a zombie. Yeah, okay. 
It looks it looks awesome, and I love that they're that you've got the teeth going, and you've got the the hands painted, and everything is going together. It looks awesome. It looks absolutely amazing. Yeah, and the and the how she structured it and built it on my face, like it's not uncomfortable at all. It's actually kind of, it's like that is perfect. If we bring this forward right here, we can see the latex is dry now, and we can start to tear like a little hole in it. Whoa! <laughs> Live action makeup. And then you can pull it back and roll it. And you got a nice little hole there. And then you could just fill that with a little bit of color. Yeah, and you really do get that that deep kind of open flesh wound look. And it's, it's a little creepy when you just look at it when it's done. But when you're getting it started, really, you, you see that, nice. that process. And it looks awesome. That looks great. Yeah. And it, so it takes a minute, not something that happens in like 30 seconds or something. But you could do that all over and tear it up, and you could just have a nice holy zombie. Yeah, and it blends in really well to skin tones. All you have to do is make sure you don't have a latex allergy, so do a patch test first. Uh, but, yeah, it, it's, it's great. To, it's a really fun, like, first project that's really effective. And you can also add, like, toilet paper to it to get a good texture. So some of Actually, this is made with uh, tissue. Yeah, if you come in close or show your neck this way. So there's some tissue over here, and kind of hard to see. Yeah, there's a little bit of skin thing and stuff like that. But yeah, you can kind of see see some of those stuff. But the chin, wow, that's really amazing. You can really see that. That one's wax. You can buy that too. Like, there's places to buy Halloween supplies. So you have tissue, you have wax. You can go to town. None of this is actually prosthetics. I make them all the time. But I wanted people to see like what's possible. You know, like you could just sculpt in a little bone structure. So you get like that that Walking Dead thing and stuff, you know, like they've been zombies for a while, you know. So is that scar wax or is it a different type yeah. of cosmetic wax? Yeah, this one's scar wax. Okay, great. Yeah, I have some of that over here somewhere. <laughs> it's it's awesome. Sometimes I have a hard time with it getting to to stick and adhere to skin. Do you what? Do you have any tricks for that? Yeah, if you get some, they call it prosthetic adhesive. It's a white glue. It's very similar um, to the glue on band aids. You know, and you can get that from a makeup effects store. Um, but if you use spirit gum, just any glue, you put that first, and then it's going to bond. Like makeup effects, there's a little chemistry going on in there. And so if you put a little bit of glue on there, you take your wax, um, you can glue it up into a little worm, you know what I call? Mm -hmm. And then you could just blend it onto the skin. So for like a shape like this up here on the nose bridge, you could just make a little worm and put it down and blend it into the glue. Mm, okay. Yeah, as long as you um, have like a little picture of a zombie or some anatomy and something like that, you can pick a few things out to sculpt it. So I would just use it for wounds and keep it simple because you can't go wrong. You can't make a mistake with a wound. Exactly. Yeah. If it, if it looks ugly, you're doing it right. Yeah. <laughs> you could spatter it. Anything happens, cover it in, in blood or goo or dirt and stuff like that. You can spatter it and then it's going to look perfect. Awesome. That that looks great. And I, I thank you so much for sharing like all of those all of those cool techniques and things with us. And you know, I want to check in with Mjolnir and see if they have any questions for you. So hello everyone at Mjolnir Academy. Hey guys. Hi. I've got a question from Margaret. Hi. And I want to know uh, do you ever look at something after you're finished with it and Mom. get kind of scared yourself? Yeah. Um if it's really good, yes. Uh if it's something like, if, it's, if I'm using makeup to tell a story and something, it's something very important or very intense happened, um, then I feel, I feel very emotional. When I do a workout, um, you know, if something's very happy, I'm very happy. If something's sad and stuff, you know, I can feel it because I consider myself a storyteller too. It's a slightly overused word and stuff, but when you're doing makeup, you're finishing telling the story. So you can feel like... Something could be too scary and intense if you did a really good job and use like a lot of anatomy or medical knowledge and stuff like that. So, um, but other than that, you're so behind the scenes, you know. Like you're very, you're very into like mechanics and stuff, you know, A to Z. So it's it's all right, you know, it's not too scary. But I'm very proud if other people are scared. That's the reaction I get the most. Other people are like, oh my god, 
<laughs> yeah, I love that. I, I have one makeup that I did that was like really intensely scary, and every time I show it to people and they go, eh, I'm like, I feel satisfaction. It feels good. Doing it right. <laughs> I, think, I think you can also kind of expand on that too, like with any sort of creation or making, when you first look at it, I mean, it can be scary. I mean, even if it's not like creepy scary, it can be like, it, you, it can be scary because you don't know how you're going to get over this task. How am I going to start programming? I don't know, I could never see in a C mill. I can never do this. You know, these things can be scary. But as soon as you figure out how to do them, that scary, you know, that unknown, the, the fear of the unknown just kind of melts away a little bit. So I think that this is a, a very obvious example of why it would be less scary when you find out how you do it. But that does expand to all realms of making and creation. Yeah. There's a, there's a project I did in recently, and I never left the country before. And everything that they asked me to do as a makeup artist is something I did before. So I was like, great, I know that. Um, but getting ready to leave the country, there was a few extra things I had to do because I wasn't going to be able to go to the store, you know, any moment. Um, so that was something that was something that I was a little worried about. But I just prepared and I got there and it was super fun. Um, so yeah, a lot of learning new things can be like that. Uh, but that's why I love makeup effects. You're always learning something new. And there's always another character design. Exactly. It, it, I totally identify with that. And, and thank you so much for sharing that inspiration and your story with us. And, and please stay with us because we're going to have a lot of questions coming through from the campers, like tons of them. So, so please stay with us. And now I want to bring on um, our, our next guest. Uh, our next guest is awesome. Our next guest is doing like designing and creating their own creatures and then using them with some cool software. So hi, Noah. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, goodness, I'm, I'm on now. Oh. Hello there. <laughs> Hi, Noah. <laughs> Thanks for coming on. Uh, now, I think we have uh, an image of one of your designs here. Um, so can you tell us how you made the painted creature? Well, it's through an app called 123D Creature, where um, basically it's, um, it's a 3D design software, sort of, where you you um, have two stages in it. You have the, the skeleton and the... Uh, the sculpting stage, and when and in the skeleton stage, you create like the basic form of the creature, and in the sculpting stage, you do all the um, the sort of details and textures and all that stuff, and eventually you come out with like really nice, very fancy looking creature, or not if you don't want to. <laughs> It's up to you. Very cool. That's great. So, Noah, what was your inspiration for this creature, and how can other campers, how can you inspire other campers to create their own creatures? Well, this creature was just sort of inspired by just looking at things, and I had just random concepts coming to my head, like, oh, yeah, that would be cool. And so then I, I start making it, and over the course of making it, you get new ideas, and eventually just come out with something completely different from what you make before and sometimes that's really really cool because you have no idea whenever I make something I have no idea really how it's going to turn out in the very end I could start out with something looking like a, I don't know a bicycle and end up with a lion I, I <laughs> so awesome. yeah. I'd like to see that fusion <laughs> <That'd> be weird <laughs> but weird is the best Sam if you say so. Thank you, Sam. I could get that on a shirt, if you say so. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So, Noah, so after, after you've created these things, what can you then do with them? Well, what you can do is um, you can upload your model to um, the gallery and or you can actually have it generated in a 3D printer and have it as an actual physical thing. Like, I have... Oh. I have one right here of, uh, where is it? It's not painted yet, but I have one. Wow. Uh, That's awesome. Yeah, it's, uh, it's in uh, some sort of resin right now, but I think I will eventually get it painted, or I will have a painted version of it. Yeah, That's but awesome. it's, I kind of like the resin look to it. It's very glossy. Mm -hmm. I do as well, but it's kind of cool to have two views of it. Exactly. Anyways... So, <laughs> it isn't quite stable yet. It doesn't really stand up, but it's pretty It's pretty cool, I think. <laughs> I think it's pretty cool, too. Sam, what do you think? It is not bad. Not bad at all. Well awesome. done. 
So campers, if you want to create those as well, you should check out 123D Creature, make something awesome, and post what you made on the community page. I would love to see that. And campers, we really want to get to your questions. So everyone, Noah, please stay with us. I'm sure we're going to have questions for you too. So everyone, stay with us. We'll have questions right after this. Cool. And we're back. Welcome to Maker Camp. We've got special effects artist uh, Margaret Kerrigan and 123D creature maker Noah. Uh, Sandra, let's start us off with some camper questions. Sorry, I was a little bit muted there. Uh, no Carson worries. wanted to know um, what tools do I need to get started in makeup? If, oh. if uh, I could go to the drugstore today, what would I be buying? Oh. Well, if you wanted to get some stuff out of the store, I would say uh, some of our favorites is using latex. And in the regular store, you can find duo eyelash adhesive. Um, and you want to do like a little allergy test on yourself first, see if it turns red and it's itchy. Um, if it doesn't, then you're fine. You can use that. But you could start, you could get some beauty sponges. Um, you could also get, if you want to do like little zombie blood, stuff like that, you can get corn syrup, uh, Hershey's, and then some red dye. And you can mix that together. And you have a lot of the basics right there. And you can go into the makeup aisle and get some dark colors like uh, burgundy and purple. You know, so something reddish and purplish and something pale. And then right there you have all that you need. You know, you can start making them pale and making dark eye sockets, uh, putting on latex, tearing holes and filling it with blood. You've got instant little Halloween zombies right there. Um, and some extras are, some people like to use, like, tissue. And you can, like, shred it up and put that on and make wrinkles and stuff. You can also grab oatmeal and stuff like that. So you can make really gross textures. <laughs> and um, and then cool things from the kitchen are, like, pudding, like vanilla pudding. You can put that for, like, pus or mucus. And, yeah. And then strawberry glaze. Then you have stuff for like zombie stuff, you know, that you can eat. You could gross out your brother, your sister, and your mom, stuff like that. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, and I w the only thing I would add to that is uh, is adding some lipstick because latex can sometimes have a hard time getting. Uh, at least for me, I have a hard time getting powder to stick to latex. So if I add a little bit of like red lipstick first, it creates like a creamy base for the powder to stick to. Yeah, that would be the closest thing to grease paint in the drugstore, which I'm so after 11 years of makeup. Um, I'm ordering things from LA all the time, so sometimes it's hard to remember um, like the stuff that I started with. But you can't go wrong with like a Halloween store too. Like, just rating that the stuff is so good, it's so cheap. That. Let's see if we have another question from Sandra. Yes, uh, we have um, another question from uh, Chris, uh, who wanted to like uh, to know uh, what what is your favorite uh, special effect uh, to make. Oh my goodness, um, my favorite ones, actually I've been getting a lot of weird ones like old age and fat makeups, like you get zombies and stuff like that all the time, but these ones are different, so you're making people old, and it's latex again, and we did this to Corinne before, we turned her into an old woman, uh, we turned her into a cat lady, so she picked up my cat, and, so too, and we took photos, but uh, you'll put latex, and you'll kind of stretch the skin, and put that on, and then you'll put, when it dries, you'll put powder, um, you know, it's more involved in that, but you can look up a tutorial, and you'll get all these wrinkles and lines, you know, going all over the face. And then, like, a fat makeup is really funny, because you can have wardrobe people, like, sew, like, bellies and stuff like that. It's really easy. You can sew, like, a t-shirt, two t-shirts together, and stuff it with uh, cotton for pillow stuffing. And then, you know, I would add these appliances on the face, you know, and then just get really fat. You can get, like, a fat neck and stuff and have it there. So I would do stories of like people who had gained and lost like hundreds and hundreds of pounds, and then we'd shoot it all the same day for Japan TV. So they like very extreme makeups and stuff, you know, uh, medical makeups with you know like burns and sores and stuff like that. Um, but they usually they tell a story like maybe somebody got cured or went to the hospital and got fixed and stuff. Uh, but you need somebody to go in and tell this story. So I like uh, the old people and the fat people is really funny. But a lot of the medical stuff or uh, Shark Week for Discovery Channel, doing like sculpting big prosthetics and stuff for wounds, that's really fun because it's, uh, it's not so small anymore. It's something you can cover the whole character with. 
I love how much fun she's having with all the zombie makeup there. She's just grabbing the cat, like, this is mine now. <laughs> uh, it's so fun. Campers, how could you not love prosthetic makeup? It's so awesome. There. <laughs> <laughs> look in here. She's got a little bit of goop on her teeth. Nice. You can have, like, mouth blood and stuff like that, so. Nice. <laughs> So, and then I know that you have kind of a demonstration that you were talking about with uh, making it look like foamy stuff. Now, campers, this may be gross, so prepare for it. But can you tell us about that and what you would do for for making um, foamy, gross yeah, mouth you things? Sure, you want to make sure with your parents that it's okay to use Alka Seltzer tablets. It's something that you usually use to settle your stomach, you know. But if you take Alka Seltzer and you grind it up um, into like a little powder, then you can use that. Let's see if you can see it right here. So you grind it up into a little powder, and then you can put a little Alka-Seltzer in your mouth, and then suddenly your zombie is foaming. Oh. <laughs> it's something that, um, it tastes a little salty and stuff like that, but mm. on, your zombie's on camera and stuff, and they're walking by and haunting uh, into the background, in the background, and they come into the foreground and stuff. Something really gross happens. So, mm. here we go. Come in closer. <laughs> Let me yeah. show you. Gross. Ah. <laughs> you yeah. Your chin a little bit. That's bubbles. There you go. It's the kind of stuff you do to gross out your siblings, stuff like that. Ah, <laughs> oh, ew. That's a serious zombie right there. And that's always fun and <laughs> very simple. I like it. <laughs> yeah, so there's another really fun drugstore drug store buy. Go get some Alka-Seltzer tablets. <laughs> it'll, it'll be totally normal. Hershey's corn syrup, Alka-Seltzer tablets, yep. uh, some, some cherry pie filling, oatmeal. Yeah, you're not doing anything nefarious at all. No. So. <laughs> you put those all on the counter, you check out, you just look at them and stuff. You don't even tell them why you're buying that. <laughs> it's just, I'm baking and I may have some stomach upset later, so mm -hmm. you're welcome. The cherry oatmeal, chocolate, cake with lipstick. <laughs> Delicious. Yeah, the lipstick really, really completes the cake. It's a garnish. It's a garnish, yeah, yeah. exactly. Cake garnish. Hot lipstick. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, let's see if we have any more questions coming in from you campers. We've got a question from Noah, uh, for Noah, from Kian, who asks, how did you learn how to use 123D Creature? Are there tutorials that he can watch? All right, so let's check in with Noah, and you may need to unmute yourself. It's up at the top. There's a little ah. microphone thing. Yay, great. We can hear you. Awesome. Tutorials. Oh, yeah, yeah. Anyways, so as far as um, learning how to do it, I suppose it's sort of you kind of teach yourself. It sort of is something that over time you just sort of find, like, something that you find sort of... Um, like find as a signature sort of trait for your creatures like mine have a similar look to them or like somebody else's might just be like very very focused on making like little details but it's um it's sort of just sort of something that eventually you pick up over time with playing for the app like when I started I wasn't making creatures like that obviously I was just I had to sort of learn the basics of the the software before I got into making any crazy projects. So you're suggesting and, and um like that something like that done, and then reverse engineer work backwards from there. Yeah. Okay. Um and something like as a tutorial, I'm not quite sure about that. I haven't seen any tutorials on how to build it. I I, I know Adam Beamish has done a few things on like a YouTube or something, but Nothing, not not really. It's sort of, as far as I'm concerned, not like um, something something that has a whole bunch of tutorials, I guess. But it's easy yeah. enough that you can teach yourself. Yeah. Awesome. I want to get started right now. Go for it. I'm gonna make a bicycle lion. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you so much for sharing about that. I think this will be really fun, and we'll have so much, I mean, for those campers who might be a little too scared to try the zombie stuff, uh, it would be really fun to go and make your own creature. You can make it pretty, you can make it scary, you can make it weird, like a bicycle lion. 
<laughs> I'm not going to get over it. A licicle? Yeah. Ooh. Or is it a, is it a blion? It depends. It depends. Yes, it on depends on who the mother is. Oh, okay, got yeah. it, got it. Okay, so we're we're gonna have to we'll we'll figure that out and get back to you, campers, or post on the community page what you think and prove Sam wrong. <laughs> Impossible. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so let's. Uh, you know, I've just had so much fun today. This is really we've we've had the. This is a really great show. It's I love this one. week. Make believe week is like literally my favorite week of all time. It's so fun. And you know what? Let's see if we have one more question from the from the counselors. Yes, we have uh, one more question from Kaz. Uh, so that's for uh, both guests. Uh, what uh, are you making now, and what uh, projects uh, do you have uh, coming next? Okay. Great question. Is that one for me? Yeah. Uh, let's let's start with you, and then we'll go over to Noah. So, what are you making now, and what are you going to make next? All right. Hold on a second. Um, what I have coming up is a few projects where we're going to have some demon horns and stuff like that. Uh, I'm going to pull this sculpture in here, actually. Oh, yeah. <laughs> ah, that's so cool. <laughs> I don't know if you can see. Yeah, so this is cool. This is um, a biclops. Let me get that. There we go. The biclops. There's two eyes on top of each other, top and bottom. Uh, this is a character I came up with when I was hanging out down in L.A. recently. Um, at Cinema Makeup School, I took a class there um, with Miles Tevis. And Miles Tevis did um, a bunch of cool movies and stuff, made huge fat people and huge demon characters. He did um, Darkness and Legend, you know, so that character has big horns. And so he was very involved and excited about me doing this. But there's like two layers of horns, you know, one set going up uh, and back and the other one going down and forward. We have fangs and stuff like that here. So I had a chance to try out a few techniques and stuff. Um, but what I have coming up next is I have classes and I have demos with prosthetics. So we're going to do different kinds of devil horns and stuff, you know, really cool ones. So if you've seen Maleficent, she has more of a costume horn and stuff like that. But we're going to have some fantasy ones. We're going to have some creepier ones um, so that different people and stuff can pick out what they like. <laughs> um, also, <laughs> uh, also, I have some projects coming up for Seven by Seven magazine. I'm helping them do their Halloween makeups, um, which is a local magazine for San Francisco. And I have this really cool project called Thaw for my friend Jason. And Jason did the concept art for the Fish Man, and he does a lot of concept art with me for special projects, uh, original characters. And Thaw is a sci-fi one that has a really cool creature. Um, I don't know if you have a chance to pull up the footage uh, from the beginning of the reel. That might take a little doing, but there's a sculpture in there that my friend George is working on, and that character is called the Stranger. You know, so it's going to be a unique alien character, and that one's coming up um, in about the next month or two. You know, we're going to schedule that one soon. So I'm really looking forward to one of my first really unique original aliens um, and all the demon horn characters and stuff like that. I haven't quite gotten to those yet. You know. Uh, maybe in the future, when I get through all the characters, I want to do a Western with a lot of dirt and so. Great. That sounds awesome. I'm so looking forward to it, and I can't not wait to see how it goes. <laughs> That's awesome. I actually have a really quick question about the sculpture behind you. I was wondering, now, we sculpted yesterday with Ardman, and we had our clay falling all over the place with the lopsided heads and heavy things. Do you have any wire armature in there at all, or is that all just being held up by the clay itself? Absolutely. I mean, it starts out with a pipe in the back, uh, and there's another small, like, T-shaped pipe in there. Uh, and then after that, I have armature wire, which is from aluminum. You can get, like, a little spool of that, um, and you can use some wire tools and stuff, and you can just rig it. Inside, it's like a little tiny, it's like a little tiny head, like a little tiny person inside of here. Um, and then after that, I just started, like, I kind of softened my clay and mel melted it, and... <laughs> <laughs> I kind of softened my clay and melted it, and we call it blocking in and stuff, you know. It's when you start with those simple forms like they did yesterday. You just start with simple forms, and you'll take your character and you'll draw it from the front, and you'll draw your character from the side, and those two angles will give you a map. So you'll just start blocking it in from the side like this and trying to get, like, those horns. Man, those horns were hard. <laughs> they took some work. And then doing the front here, you know, you can block things in on the face. 
I didn't even know that um, his eyes were going to be quite like that. You know, uh, it's it's pretty close. You know, to my original sketch, which actually the the creative process is really interesting. Um, Noah was saying he didn't know how he would end up with something where it would start. I was sitting in a car on my way to somewhere and I was just sketching stuff, you know, and this just happened at the end and I was like, oh cool, that's great. I didn't know what I was going to make, but um, sketching is really cool. You never know like what you're going to get and this character, it, it totally pays off. You know, you just keep practicing things, drawing, painting and stuff like that um, and you can come up with something really cool and really unique. Yeah, well, I love it. It totally looks great, and I'm so inspired by it. So thank you so much for sharing it. This is cool. Um, you know, I also want to jump over to Noah, too, because, uh, Noah, I want to find out what you're currently working on and what like what are you, have you been working on and what do you want to work on next? Is the microphone? Oh, yeah, oh. you're good. We can hear you. Okay, great. Um, what I'm working on right now, hmm. I'm working on a couple things. I think I um I'm working on something that's like a sort of a goat type thing, I think, right now. Couple a few like things that look like fish, I think. I, I don't know. Like I said, I don't know what I'm going to end up with, so I <laughs> I might end up with a uh, a frog, I don't know. But yeah, right now I have a couple things that look like fish, a couple things that look like um, I think goats and all sorts of weird things, and um, hopefully they will eventually be on the creature community, and uh, people will be able to see them. So look out for that if you go on the app, I guess. Will cool. do. I'm excited to see it. Thank you so much for sharing that. And right now, I think we're going to jump on over to uh, to jump in and see Pierre and see what the campers have been working on. Uh, yes, Paloma. So um, uh, here um, first are um, yesterday's guest. Uh, you see the pictures. Uh, create space at the Middleton Free Library. Uh, they are making uh, their uh, own uh, shoulder ship uh, models. They look great. We had so much fun with them on. They posted so many amazing photos afterwards. So thank you so much for sharing the hangout with us and for sharing your fantastic Sean the Sheep. Y'all did a great job. Um, and then uh, here is the Tinker, Tinker, Tinker Maker Camp uh, celebrated the last day of camp with scratch pianos, paper flowers that you will see next, and uh, paper circuits. After that, here it is. Um, and then eight maker friends created a singing map with Mickey Mickey. That's a video. <laughs> Looks great. So make sure to keep sharing your work to the Maker Camp community page and show everyone what you did, what you learned, and what you want to make next. Thank you so much for sharing that, campers. I love seeing what you do. And and counselors, can you talk a little bit about today's daily project? Actually, yeah, you know, today's daily project, <laughs> well, we were talking about it with the campers, or we were talking about it with uh, Barbara, and there's a, we'll post a link to that on the community page. It's a really great one. It's got, you use latex, you use tissue paper, you use all this really fun stuff. It's awesome. Check it out. And I love doing it, so I cannot wait to see what all of you do with it, too. Put a twist on it. Make yourself a blyan. I think they're doing the twist with it, so I think that works out pretty well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love this game. Oh, my gosh. Yo. <laughs> nice, very nice. I love it. I love it. <laughs> We're having so much fun, and isn't that what camp is all about? So no. thank you so much, everyone, for joining us, Margaret, Noah, and the Mjolnir Academy. All of you have the best attitudes, and I have loved having you on today. Absolutely. And be sure to tune in tomorrow for a very special Maker Camp, because we're going to be going to the White House. Woo! Right! 
the White House. The White House. The, 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 big one. the, the White House. Not <laughs> a White House. No, the, there's plenty of there those. There is a definite article on that. <laughs> the White House. The White House. <laughs> I'm so excited about it. And, you know, this, this week has been amazing. This whole camp has been amazing. So thank you so much for giving us this opportunity and joining with us. And campers, if you were inspired by anything that you saw on the show today, remember, do try this at home. Goodbye, campers.